Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? So today we're going to be looking at DigitalOcean's app platform and deploying two applications with it. Uh, DigitalOcean's app platform is really, really easy to use. It's very intuitive, and there is a very minimal configuration that we have to do. It's frankly just a few clicks, and then we have an application running. Could not be uh, more streamlined. So the two applications that I have, one is a very simple static site, just a create React app application, and the second one is a full stack application, a little more involved, that will require me to provision a database as well to connect to it. So let's go ahead and get the very first application started. We're going to go with the small one. Um, DigitalOcean allows you to draw your you know, application from, if you've got a containerized, you can pull it from Docker Hub or DigitalOcean's container registry. Or uh, if you have it hosted on a, you know, a Git repo site of some kind, GitHub, GitLab, and I do believe Bitbucket is supported as well, uh, you can draw from those. I'm going to choose GitHub because my account is already linked to GitHub because I do have a lot of other resources on DigitalOcean. So GitHub is from where I will have everything linked. The repository is one, let's see, of these two. I have simple deploy demo, the one we will utilize here. I'm going to click next and it's gonna have a couple um, options to pop up. It's gonna pull your you know, default branch. Main is from where I will deploy my code. And it's gonna have auto deploy pre-selected for you which is really, really great because any update that happens to the main uh, branch is gonna trigger an auto redeployment, which is you know, phenomenal. Like, cool, we've got continuous deployment now on this project. We're gonna hit next and then look at what the configuration will entail for step two. So we do have a teeny tiny bit of configuration to do. It's gonna pick up that is a node project and it's gonna have the typical uh, build and start scripts available from that, so very intuitive. Um, it's just a simple create React app, so I don't have an environment variable uh, to plug into it. I do have to change the type of project this is. I don't want a web service. This is just a simple you know, create React app. So instead, I'm gonna change this to a static site. DigitalOcean's app platform allows you to have three free uh, static sites and any additional static sites beyond that are $3 a month or so. Very, very cheap, uh, very inexpensive. So I'll select static site and I'll change up the rules accordingly. I don't have anything else to add to that. Add a database is something we will not actually do for the second app here. And I'll talk about that a little more when we get to it. So I will hit next. I will go ahead and uh, we, we've got the name that our uh, project needs to be. This is going to be what is shown in the DigitalOcean app URL. So it'll have your string here, which it will intelligently guess from, you know, wherever your container registry is or whatever your Git repo, you know, registry is. It's going to, you know, grab that from that URL. So cool. Like it's already got simple deploy demo pre-configured for me. And it'll usually have a suffix as well. It's going to be like this hyphen, like A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, like some like five to eight digit alphanumeric string afterwards. But it'll be that dot on digitalocean dot app. And uh, once it is deployed, we can go look at the domain settings for it. And we can walk through a quick little bit of how we could, you know, have this on a custom domain instead of being on this giant on digitalocean dot app URL. With this being a static site, like I said, it's going to be free. Like DigitalOcean straight up won't even let us go to the upgraded things because they're like, no, like it's a static site. Like, why would you, you know, pay for that? So I'm going to move out the way so we can see that launch starter app button. I'm going to click launch starter app and it's going to start running in the background. Uh, it's going to start building up. It's going to take a couple minutes because, you know, it, you know, cloud services will take a couple minutes to clone the code, build it, you know, how they see fit and get it up and running. So while that's happening, I'm actually going to skip over to the database uh, section over here and build up a database cluster. I know that we're, you know, focused on the app platform 
and we had the ability to click on a button that says add database in the four steps we went through here. But if you click that, you get a very scaled down database. Um, they provide a dev database for you know $7 a month, not bad, but it's very small. And the database engine is locked to Postgres for that. You don't have any other choice outside of that. So if you use uh, you know, MySQL or MongoDB or uh, even Redis, if you use any of those three engines, you have to go to the database um, cluster over here, the database platform, and create your own cluster, which is still very intuitive. Um, I'm only going through this because I built my application to use MySQL, and we can now utilize that you know, to showcase an extra part of the deployment process. Um, additionally, with that dev database, it's going to be locked in at Postgres version 14. So if you do have a legacy version of Postgres you need to support, the database cluster lets you go as far back as 10, which is also really nice. Um, since I'm using MySQL though, that's going to be the engine I select. And with any of these options, the database is going to be starting at $15 a month, but you do get a significantly uh, better offering than the dev database itself. If 7 and 15 are still you know, a bit too rich for your tastes, you can always look at other platforms like Heroku. Uh, Heroku has very easy add-ons for free tier databases that you know are pretty limited like the um, dev database that is provided by DigitalOcean, but you know, it's free. Uh, AWS also has really you know cost-effective uh, databases as far as scaling goes, so that could definitely be another uh, platform. You know, we're developers; we evaluate everything, and you know, everything's got trade-offs. Every place we deploy, you know, we've got a decision that we make, and there's going to be a pro and con to you know whatever we do decide to choose. So, I get to choose where my database is located. I already have resources hanging out in the New York zone three uh, data center so you know i'm it's pre-selected that for me i'm going to keep it uh there as well just because i'm closer to the east coast as well so that's lower latency for me and it's going to provide a cluster name it's going to want a project with which you have to put your um you know cluster in so your projects are just going to be like a container of all your you know miscellaneous resources so that's just a couple clicks and it's done. I've already got one established for like a million resources I have everywhere else. So uh, it's automatically applied that for me, which is nice. And then it's gonna create the database for me. So we've got a few steps we need to go through with the database, but very quick and easy. Uh, just simple clicks, get started. This security step, very, very important. If you do not add a specific trusted resource everything is going to be whitelisted so you will have connection attempts from all over the globe otherwise so I would highly 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 recommend that you choose your application as the only trusted source or maybe your IP address or maybe some manual IP addresses if you're at some kind of organization that you know has offices in different locations but um you know, usually I, I create my server first or my application first, then like provision the database. But since I wanted to do this asynchronously, since these databases take like 10 minutes to uh, finish, you know, spinning up, I wanted to do this before I did my app. So I, I will have to circle back here and add my full stack deploy demo as a trusted resource. So we'll put this on pause. I will click continue. I will do this later. It's going to give us our credentials already while everything is still building up. You're going to have everything as key value pairs available, or you could grab the uh, URL itself, the connection string, which I'm going to grab. And, you know, I mean, this is a database that I'm provisioning just for the purpose of this video, and it's getting deleted uh, immediately afterwards. So I'm watching you, you, you know, crafty hackers. So I'll copy this because that will be an environment variable I will need to add for my application. Then continue, I'll do this later. That's going to lead us to the next step stage, which involves a migration. 
if you had some other you know local existing database or some other remote database that had data it'll help you through that process but I literally don't have anything in this database it's strictly just a database that I can connect to and my server just runs like select current timestamp so it's just a way of my server being you know verifying that my server has connected you know to a database and done something with it but application number two going to go through the similar you know process that we did with step one application located at github going to go ahead and choose my full stack deploy repo and same options as before i've got a main branch from which i want everything to auto deploy so i hit next we actually have less work to do here for the full stack application than we did with the create react app and the only work we had to do for the create react app is change this from a web service to a static site but given that this is a you know full stack application we need a back end you know running we are keeping this as a web service and so it does have our successful you know uh, start command you know guessed very intuitively i'm skipping the add a database here because we, we talked about a couple of the reasons why um, this only provisions that teeny tiny postgres database if you wanted something larger or you wanted something with a different database engine you have to create it externally in the database platform so we have done that it's building up in the background i'm going to hit next same thing as before we've got our name automatically you know done here it's going to try to um, create a url with that And then I'm going to go with, you know, El Cheapo, like basically a Raspberry Pi, you know, version one server. Um, you can compare and contrast the plans you want. You can choose how many like parallel containers in case you really, really, really need some, um, you know, incredible like uptime and uh, make sure that you've got, you know, some good reliability. But for this just deployment demo, I'm going to go ahead and do El Cheapo, you know, Raspberry Pi-esque, half a gig of RAM, one virtual CPU. $5 a month, super, super cheap. And that's the launch basic app button. And I'm going to come over here to settings, by the way, and go to app level environment variables. I'm going to paste my connection string here. I still have that in my clipboard from when I was provisioning the database. And I'm going to do database URL. I did notice that when we looked over at our app thing right before I went to start building number two, that number one had already built successfully and is live. So if I click here at this URL that it gave us, which that again is my application name with that like five digit or so uh, extra little bit of alphanumeric characters and here we go it's nothing fancy it's just a react app with you know i mean it's literally the create react app with my own company assets on top of it so <laughs> nothing you know too fancy but we have a project live on DigitalOcean that i did in just a minute with a few clicks which is like ludicrous like how awesome is that i'm going to come over to my databases whoops I was gonna say, I need to go check on it and see how it's doing, how far along the process it's at uh, while it is spinning up, which it actually looks like it is done. I need to go ahead and modify my settings. If you didn't see trusted sources here, you could still go to settings and access it there. Edit here. And I'll say my full stack application is the only thing that can connect to this database. Let's see, and so it's gonna take a couple more minutes to finish with the full stack one. So let's look at like networking. So what if you hate this URL? Cause I kind of do. Well, you can go to your settings panel for your app Then you can go to domains. And if you have purchased your own domain or already own a domain and want to add this as a subdomain, you can do so here. So I could go click on add domain, 
then do like react app demo dot atlc dot you know, dev my site with a new domain and we'll pull up some DNS records for you if you want to you know have DigitalOcean manage that you can have them do that I manage my own just because I have like a million you know subdomains for all these random goofy projects I create and so I would just copy this for my CNAME records and then you know if I go to reactapp.atlc.dev or whatever it'll redirect it you know it'll point to this application instead. So that's pretty cool that we can do that very easily as well. Um, a couple of things that we get just out of the box, we get some alert rules enabled. We have uh, like a domain alert and a build failure alert. Uh, we see two alert policies enabled here, but we'll be able to see, here we go. I was like, why isn't it showing up yet? In case like a networking rule fails for some reason, it launches a domain failed event. And then we have a deployment failed event. And that's gonna be if just one of your build scripts fails or something. Um, and it's gonna, by default, email you. So I don't have to be like monitoring my deployments like a hawk. It's going to go ahead and send that to me via email. You can choose what to do um, based on, you know, what happens there you could also have like a slack integration if you have you know they've got webhooks for that so you could have a, a slack channel say like yo you know fix your stuff you just broke the uh, production app thankfully you know sensibly if a build failure occurs for any reason it's not gonna you know take your app offline it's gonna keep the old one in place until a sex successful deployment happens and then it replaces the uh, currently running one with the new one and cool as of 20 seconds ago we now have this one online and <laughs> it's not a whole lot to write home about it's a pretty ugly site but uh, this is a react app that communicates to an express server and that express server talks to my database running a select current timestamp query so when I click this button, it act, it you know hits up that route again, and we are able to communicate to my database to get the current timestamp. So this is encompassing a good bit of DigitalOcean resources just from that one little goofy app. And you know, I spent most of the time you know talking and waiting for it, but how much time did it actually take to get this up and running on its own? Very little. And I know that the database itself is a little you know on the pricier side but $15 a month for like a 10 gigabyte database way overkill for this I probably would keep like a clear DB you know um, database provision through Heroku for that and that way this server the code itself just $5 a month to run uh, my static site here it's my first of three so that's free so very very inexpensive and like I said you know Databases, you get a lot of offering, but the pricing is, eh, you know, there are definitely some more economical options with other cloud platforms, so you might want a more distributed architecture. But that's uh, the beauty of the app platform. Really, really easy to utilize. And it was just, you know, 10 clicks per each, and we had it up and running. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope that if you're searching for this video at least, uh, it's because you wanted to learn a little more about DigitalOcean's app platform, and I hope that you have a great time uh, deploying all of your resources on it. Alright, we'll keep on coding.